Good morning or afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is JP Picard, and I'll be the uh, host today. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's uh, Vortex University webinar uh, on the uh, Vortex CAD Optimizer add-on. With me on the line is Marc Alexandre, the product manager for uh, Vortex Software Solution. So Vortex University, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, is a monthly webinar in which we cover one specific topic and we dive in depth into the capabilities of uh, the Vortex editor, specific modules, or uh, even uh, do deep dives in the samples provided with Vortex. So if you want to keep track of the next sessions, you can use the URL displayed on the screen, which is a landing page that will always show the upcoming uh, webinars. Today's presentation will focus on the Vortex CAD Optimizer add-on. So throughout the presentation, we're going to go through the capabilities of uh, Vortex CAD Optimizer add-on, but we're going to go through it with a uh, demonstration that will focus on a CAD model that we've uh, we've uh, pre-simplified a bit, but will show uh, to a large extent the number of, of uh, elements in a CAD model that you can actually change to uh, increase the efficiency of the simulation. So we'll get back to the uh, exact model's uh, details uh, a bit later, but as you can see from the screenshot, it's a model that has a lot of details, that uh, that takes a lot of uh, memory when uh, the number of moving parts are actually uh, fairly uh, limited. All right, so today's presentation will be broken down in four sections. We're going to start by uh, taking a look at the different options you have to import models into the Vortex Editor. Then we'll talk about the CAD optimization workflow uh, that is uh, that we recommend. Uh, and as you'll see, it's a fairly simple workflow that uh, can end up taking a good amount of time, but is uh, is fairly efficient uh, compared to uh, going through a, uh, a third-party program uh, uh, such as a 3D modeling solution. Then we'll do a step-by-step -step demo in which we'll showcase how each of the tools provided with the CAD optimizer add-on can be used to uh, repair or optimize uh, CAD models. And finally, we'll uh, do a Q&A, but if at any time during the presentation you wish to ask questions, you can go ahead and use the right-hand side GoToWebinar interface. You can download the presentation materials in the handout section, or you can send us questions using the questions box, and we'll do our best to answer them either as we go along or at the end during the uh, Q&A section. As usual, we are recording this presentation, and it will be sent to you by email afterwards, most likely uh, next Monday, alongside with the presentation materials. So those of you that are not familiar with Vortex, Vortex is a real-time visualization and simulation uh, solution that is used for virtual prototyping to test the performance of uh, product designs, for operator training in industries such as uh, heavy machinery uh, operation, uh, crane operation, and for operational planning uh, where you want to uh, verify the, uh, the performance of your machine in a specific uh, mission. Now, it's been trusted and deployed by hundreds of clients worldwide in uh, many industries from ports, uh, offshore, construction, and uh, product design. Today, we'll be using the Vortex Editor, which is the desktop application that, uh, that is used to create, validate, deploy uh, the uh, Vortex mechanisms and scenes. So let's jump into it. What is the Vortex CAD Optimizer? So to understand the Vortex CAD Optimizer, it's good to uh, take a step back and look at how you could create model geometries before Vortex 6.6, which is the latest version of the Vortex software solution. You had a single pipeline. You basically needed to use uh, 3D modeling software, such as uh, Maya, for example. Now, this is a normal creation pipeline for uh, companies who are uh, creating training simulation solutions. Uh, you need high quality models that look uh, good. So that's that's the typical path you're going to use. And those models don't actually have a lot of moving parts. So you're going to basically be relying on 3D artists to create realistic representation of your equipment. But as I mentioned in the introduction, Vortex is also used to test the uh, different uh, capabilities of uh, new product designs. And product designers do not necessarily use 3D modeling software. They actually are using a lot more uh, CAD software to create their models. So with Vortex 6.6, we've expanded the, uh, the different options you have to uh, import model geometries, and we've added CAD software. So this also means that we support a lot more file types in the Vortex 6.6. Uh, beyond the uh, 3D modeling file types you see on the right, DAE, which was added in 6.6 as well, you now have five different 
CAD file types that you can import uh, in Vortex. And these are the leading file types that, uh, that you'll see with uh, the major CAD software solutions out there. So the CAD optimizer add-on is an optional add-on for a Vortex editor. It's available for Vortex 6.6 and up. And at a high level, it provides you with the ability to import CAD files models directly in the editor, but also unlocks many model simplification tools. And these are really important, and that's where we'll spend most of our time uh, today. These tools allow you to simplify and defeature the model to remove details that are not relevant to, uh, uh, to the uh, real-time simulation to uh, evaluating the performance of your design. Things such as nuts and bolts, uh, or uh, the, uh, the uh, different holes that are there for assembly are not uh, necessary. Uh, they're not necessary to test how your model reacts with the human in the loop. So before we jump to the demo, I just want to break down the different steps we're going to go through today. And we'll do a sample uh, ex uh, example of all of these steps, the, but you'll have to loop back sometimes based. Uh, so it's not a, a straight workflow, it is more of a cycle. So first you need to get uh, started and set up your, uh, your CAD. You need to import it, and we use what we call the Colorize Node uh, tool, which will show you the details of your model. And this is great because it's going to, to show you where you need to focus uh, as far as simplification optimization goes. Then we're going to get into uh, model optimization. We're going to remove empty nodes. We're going to remove non-visible nodes as well, those that do not impact either uh, collisions with the environment or the... Um, or the uh, performance of the vehicle. We're also going to merge fixed nodes, such as uh, the different parts of a uh, truss boom, which do not move independently, they move uh, together. And then we'll repair the model as well. We're going to repair geometries, we're going to fill empty nodes, and we're going to copy elements uh, to optimize the uh, performance, but also to make sure that we have no, uh, no uh, mechanical parts that are empty. And we'll clean up the hierarchy so it's easier to work with our model. So today's demo, we will be working on a simplified four crane model. So I say simplified because it does not include the details such as the nuts, bolts, the holes that are there for assembly. This is a fairly detailed model that is uh, really about the different uh, mechanical parts that are in the, in the, the port crane, uh, but it's not as detailed as some uh, CAD models that you might have. Now, you'll see on the right, we've highlighted a number of vertices, triangles, and primitives, and the memory taken by the model. Now, throughout this uh, demo, we'll uh, work on reducing all of these parameters from anywhere between 50 and 80 percent. This will greatly improve the uh, performance of our simulation and allow us to create a, uh, a uh, scenario in which uh, we'll be run, uh, able to run at a much higher frame rate. The port crane model we're using was, uh, was uh, taken on grabcad.com. Uh, you can find the model yourself if you look for the G20-110 uh, boom crane. Uh, and we uh, thank the creator for giving us the, uh, the opportunity to use it in today's demo. All right, so I will now hand over the controls to Marc Alexandre, who will uh, begin by uh, setting up the uh, work area. So Marc Alexandre. Thank you, GP. So if you were with us for the uh, Vortex 6.6 uh, seminar, uh, you've probably heard about the new graphic gallery document, which is a new file type that we've introduced at 6.6 to contain the uh, 3D models, the graphic geometries, the graphic material, and the texture. Now the, graphic, uh, the graphics gallery is going to be the document through which we're going to access the various CAD uh, optimizer tool. So let's open up a, a new graphic gallery document. Now, if you have the, uh, the CAD Optimizer add-on installed, you're going to see a new uh, icon called 3D CAD model right beside the usual 3D model icon. This is where you import your 3D CAD model. You're also going to notice that we have a lot more tools available uh, than we had originally in the graphics gallery. So to start with, we press on our uh, import CAD model and we navigate to our model, the, uh, the, the crane, and then we confirm and we wait for the model to load. Here we see something that happens often is that the model's axis are not aligned properly and also the model's units are not set properly. So if we take our measure, we see that our crane is 52 meter wide. I don't think that's right. So we're gonna start over and open a new gallery. 
and open the uh, model again. Only this time, before selecting the model, I'm going to set the axis as Z up instead of Y up. And I'm going to change the unit from meter to inches. I have previously checked this with the, uh, the modeler. So I select the crane. I confirm. Ah, now we have the crane properly sized in the right orientation in our viewport. If you go look in the Explorer window on your left, you'll see all the nodes that make up the, uh, the crane itself. And at the very bottom of the list, there's two folders, one for the graphics geometry, that is the 3D meshes that comprise each of the nodes, and the graphic material that determine how the, uh, the nodes react to light. Uh, there's no texture folder because this particular model was not textured in CAD. So, of course, Vortex doesn't have any information to work on. It's kind of hard to see what is what on this. So there is a button called Colorize Node right here at the middle of the toolbar. Click on it. What this does is that it assigns a random color to each of the node. All the computer wants is to make sure that adjacent nodes are colored differently if at all possible. So that allows us to see how many nodes there are and how they're organized. As we can see, there's a lot of parts. We're going to have to merge some of them. We're going to have to delete some of them, and we're going to have to repair some of them. Back to you, GP. Thank you, Marc Alexandre. So now that we've set up our uh, model and we've planned the uh, different work that needs to be done, we're going to get into model optimization. Now, model optimization is the first part where you're going to be uh, editing your model. You're going to be editing its uh, collision geometries, its uh, nodes, removing some of them. Uh, and sometimes you will need to come back to this step even after you start uh, repairing the model because that's where you will end up removing a lot of the, um, the details that are not necessary for real-time simulation. And that's where you get the biggest gain in efficiency. So we're going to look at how we can remove empty nodes, remove non-visible nodes, and merge fixed nodes in the next uh, portion of the demo. Thank you, GP. So back to our crane. Now, first, the first step is to identify what we can make without to start with. So the first thing we could, that can go is those cable. Basically, here they're model as part of the model, but if we simulate the crane in Vortex, these are going to be taken care of by the uh, cable system uh, component. So therefore, we can just select the node, press delete, and eliminate them. So we're going to remove all of the cable, but we do keep the hook because we're going to need them to uh, to create the model. So now I've removed the cable from the crane. What else can we remove? If we go look at the bottom pedestal here, there's a lot of thingamajig or items here on the side that we don't really need in the simulation. Either the operator is not going to see them from the cab or they're too small to be seen from a distance. So really, we have to remove them from the, uh, the model. So we're going to start by clicking on them and just simply deleting them as we go. Just like that. We can also do uh, multi-select just by dragging with the left mouse button. Just like this. Being careful not to hit anything. And we just delete. And we keep going. Deleting parts that are not needed on the crane itself. Okay, now I want to remove these two assembly as well, but the gallery here is in the way and the mass is in the way. So we have a, a number of tools that are going to help us with this. I select the node. By right-clicking, you get access to a number of tools I'd call Hide Selected, Show Only Selected, Only Unselected, Show All or Hide All. So in this case, I'm going to do Hide Selected. The pedestal is still there. It's just not visible. And it's not affected by what we're going to do in the uh, in the in the work, so I grab this, I hide it, and I keep going. I just grab these and I hide them. Hide this and I hide it. Hide this and I hide it. There we go. Now I've got a better view, and it's much easier to select these and just delete them. Same thing for this part and this part. Now that I'm done. 
all I have to do is just select the show all button and I'm back with the full pedestal. And don't worry if you missed a few parts, you can always go back and keep deleting as you need. So now the pedestal is much cleaner. We've eliminated quite a few triangles and the simulation is going to be more performing. We're still left with the graphics geometry in the folder here. So we have two choices. We can hunt them down manually, which is going to be very time consuming. Or we can just go to this button here, which is called the remove orphan option. What the remove orphan does is that it checks for anything that's not currently being used by the model in the, in the gallery. So all of these are the graphic geometry related to all the nodes that I've deleted. So you can do select all or clear all. In this case, I want to select them all, delete, and now they're gone from the model. Now we're going to start merging uh, nodes um, as we go. So the boom, for example, here should really be just one big part, but it's composed of multiple little trusts. So we're going to merge them together. So I just select the node I want to merge, right click, merge graphic node, and they're now one node. Note that you have to make sure that the uh, graphic material is the same. The computer is not going to merge nodes that have different graphic material. So if you have trouble, that's one of the first things to check. So I just keep merging and merging. And I think I've missed a few parts at, yep. and merge again, and I still got one here. There we go. Now our boom is just one large piece, which is going to be much more convenient for, uh, for uh, doing the simulation. It's now part of this new node here, which is called merge, and just to make sure we're going to rename it so that we know it's the boom. Main boom, there we go. Again, I run the delete uh, remove orphan uh, option to delete all the unnecessary graphic geometry. I'm going to keep doing this on the model until uh, I've merged as many parts as I could. Keep in mind that, as GP said, this is a, a cycle. It's a back and forth process. It might not be a good idea to merge everything right now because you might be able to perform additional simplification operation before merging the part. For example, here on the back winch, there are holes on this part that I'm going to have to plug before I merge this into the main winch block. Also, I don't want to merge the pulleys with the main tower because one, I'm going to need them animated in the simulation, and two, I'm going to use them as reference to build the pulleys on the tip of the boom, which the original uh, crane designer did not do. So back to you, GP. Thank you. So now that we've done uh, the optimization uh, part, we're going to look at the uh, repair uh, functions, uh, the uh, different ways you have to heal some of the uh, geometries that might not have uh, made the transfer properly or that were not properly configured uh, initially so that you have proper collisions and contacts. We're also going to look at how you can uh, use existing nodes to uh, complement the model and, uh, and make sure that it is ready for uh, the addition of the uh, mechanical dynamics components. So let's go back to the demo, Marc Alexandre. Thank you, GP. So back to our crane, I, I did like a kitchen show and I cheated a little. I loaded a new graphic gallery that already has all the nodes merged and cleaned properly so that you have a better idea of what's going on. I've uh, merged quite a few parts. For example, the, uh, the warning lamp up here is now just one piece instead of being multiple little parts. All the ladders and the mass have been merged together. So it creates a much simpler model, and I've started renaming them as well, like the operator cabin, the lamp pole, and so on. Let's keep going. Now, we want to remove more triangles from the model without affecting its overall appearance or the, its usefulness for a simulation. What else can we do? This ring here has a lot of 
edges, a lot of triangle, but since it's underneath the crane, we're not really going to see it. So we might as well get rid of it. If we select this part, we right click, we have an option that's called replace with convex geometry. What this does is that it's going to replace the existing geometry with something else, a new geometry that's a simple convex that tries to follow the same shape, external shape that is. So I select replace with convex geometry. I now have a new node and a new geometry that's just flat like this and it goes on the external. And you can also do this with more complex part. Here I've got the warning light on top. That's a lot of triangle for something that's not going to be very, very much seen and not very useful for a simulation. So I select my warning lamp housing. Again, I go to replace with convex geometry. And now I've got just one big lamp that I can assign the, uh, an emissive graphic material to and transform into an actual lamp. So that's going to be a lot more useful. And these have their new graphics geometry. A good workflow would be to take these and just drop them into the uh, graphics geometry folder so that everything is kept tied up. There we go. Much better. And then remove orphan again to remove all little bits that are too much. So now I've got quite a few uh, nodes cleared up, but I still got work to do. So let's keep going. What else can we do? Well, we got some repairs to do on the hook. Yep. So sometimes the CAD model will come out uh, with one mesh reverse. It happens time and again. So if I select it, it creates a hole. There's a tool called change mesh orientation. What it does is that it flips the mesh around and now it looks correct. So it's a tool that you might have to use for uh, curved surfaces or flat surfaces. Uh, if you see a hole in your model, it might be a good idea to try that first. Let's keep going. So what else can we do? Um, we have, speaking of holes, we have one on the back here. So this part has a hole in it. Uh, one way to do it would be to just go again replace with convex geometry, but it kind of does an ugly shape. So we're going to undo and we're going to try something else. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to uh, copy the part. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to move it out so that you can see it better. Now, what I want to do is use this as sort of an end cap to the other part, flip it, and then come and connect it to it. So I don't need these parts for it, but this is just one node, so I'm going to have to break it down first. By right-clicking, again, I have an option called Split Geometry. What this does is that the computer is going to try and look if there's existing nodes hidden inside the node that it could use to split it into more parts. Let's try it. In this case, it didn't work. There's no hidden nodes, so the computer has no information to give us. All is not lost. We have another option called split edges. What it does is that it's going to break the mesh based on the edges. All we have to do is assign a maximum angle. And now is, uh, the computer has broken the, uh, the model into smaller parts. So now I can just go and delete the parts that I don't need. And then I want to close that thing up. So I'm going to go and use the fill gap. And it didn't work, so I'm going to use the convex geometry option again. So now I've got something that's flat that I can use. I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to move it into place like this. Now I'm going fast and uh, kind of hard, kind of lose with the uh, the alignment. Obviously, you can spend more time and do a better job. Make sure that everything is proper and aligned. And I'm still a little off. So there we go. Much better. All right. So now that they're aligned, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to grab it 
like this, and then I'm going to merge the two. And now my part has a nice end cap to it. So that's one of the um, possibilities that you can do with the tool that you have. And you'll notice that I've got sort of a little uh, thing here that's remaining. And that's my mistake because I really should have cleaned that up selected those and deleted them. Now they're part of the model, I would have to break that up again, select these, delete, and so on. So be careful with that, make sure you've cleaned up your model, your parts properly before uh, merging them. So now let's see what else we can do for this model. Now, remember those holes that I showed you before? We really don't need them. So I'm going to show only selected, we're going to hide the rest of the crane, and I want to hide those holes here. So I'm going to take my measuring tool and I'm going to see, so they're about 0 0.015 meter. Perfect. So I'm going to select my part and I'm going to go to the fill hole and remove bump tool. Now, why is it called that way? Because it can be used in multiple ways. You can fill holes, blind hole, that is holes that don't go all the way through the part, or bumps, which are of course holes that are external that are bumped out of the part, like screw head or bolts or whatever you want. In this case I select hole and to make sure that I cover everything I say maximum diameter 0 0.02 meter. So it's going to close down every hole that it's smaller than 0 0.02 meter. And now I've got a nice new mesh with the hole closed down. I make my crane reappear. And now that my part is cleaned off, I can merge it with the rest of the winch block, and now my part is merged. And it's very easy to do, as you can see. And then you repeat the operation on the other side, hole, zero two, and cleaned up, then the holes are removed, and then again, I merge it with my winch block and there we go. We just eliminated quite a few triangles and we've eliminated holes that are unneeded and we've reduced the number of nodes uh, that are needed. So you keep going that way and you clean up the model and at some point you might need, you might find yourself uh, in a situation where you need to do a little more work. Like for example, in this case the uh, original designer of the crane did not bother to model the, uh, the front of the boom. So I don't have a boom uh, pulley here to hang my uh, my cable from. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this part and first thing I'm going to do here, I see that my transform is at the origin of the uh, the crane. That's not very good because I won't, be I won't be able to align my pulley correctly. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go and, uh, where is that option? set the graphic node, set transform to center. So now I've moved the transform to the center of the part. Not bad, but not exactly what I need. So it said I'm going to use set origin axis. What it does is that it's going to set an origin based on the hole in the part. So what it did here, this is my original part, and now I've got transform in each of the hole in the part. So one up here, and one down there. And I can use, these are empty nodes with no graphic geometry or no graphic material. And I can use them as reference point by using this set graphic node transform. I can assign this, for example, and this is going to change the transform of the part based on that. So let's do it later. So I'm going to take this part, and now what I want to do is just uh, use it as a base to uh, create a pulley. So let's use this point two, that's the scaling. And what I did is I just squashed the, the part, if you will, and then I'm going to move it like this. And I'm going to make a copy like this. And much better. And now I've got, I'm going to go grab the pulley over there. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. Now I've got a new pulley here, and I want to have the transform in a more convenient place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the transform to center. Now the transform is at the center of the pulley. It's going to be much easier to just place it in the, in the proper position. 
I'm just going to bring it up here like this. Bring it here like this. And you keep going until until the pulley is at the right position. Obviously, I can scale it as well. So that is going to fit between. And now I've got a pulley in place for my cable to loop through. And I'm going to keep doing this to make sure that I have a model that's going to be able to support the uh, Vortex cable system as I go. Now, we're going to jump ahead a bit, and I'm going to load a, uh, a new graphic gallery that actually has this work done so that you have an idea of what's going on. Uh, you'll notice that the Colorize Node button shuts off every time you, uh, you load or deload the uh, graphics gallery. So that's absolutely normal. So this is the model with all the graphics node rename reorganized. The tip of the boom has been remodeled with uh, pulleys to put the cables on. The hook pulleys are set correctly. The winch has its own pulley. Pulley up here. All the parts have been simplified, renamed, and now the model is pretty much ready for, uh, for use as a mechanism. Now, there's one more step that you can do is uh, assign graphics material to it. This is a CAD model, it's not a, a 3D model, so it doesn't have any uh, UV set on it, so you can't just put a texture on it. It doesn't mean that your model can't look nice. So what I did here is that I went and I grabbed some uh, graphic material from our graphics material library, which come with the Vortex sample, and I applied them on the model. So there's one for metal that is used for the uh, mechanical parts, there's one for white paint that's used for the boom, and one for red paint that's used for the, uh, the superstructure. Now, if we look at the sunlight like this, and we show it daily, it looks better than just overall gray. Still not as good as a properly textured model, but for an engineering test, it should do the trick. Back to you, GP. All right, thank you, Marc Alexandre. So, this was a good sample of all the different uh, tools that are available to simplify a model. As we've mentioned, obviously we had to skip ahead a few times because this is a fairly time-consuming process, but in the end, we did go from a uh, CAD model to something that was very optimized, and we've reduced the number of uh, polygons by about 70% and the number of uh, vertices by uh, 80%. So this basically uh, gives you a lot more processing power to use on dynamics, to use on the scene. And it means you get a much smoother uh, simulation that will provide you with a very accurate um, representation of the behavior and the performance of uh, the crane. Uh, and even though the uh, visual fidelity will look the same to the operator, uh, the model was simplified in a way that was uh, smart so that uh, we could uh, basically represent those details either with textures or uh, or with uh, flatter parts. So before we move on to the question, I just want to get back to uh, one point on this. The level of details you maintain depends on, on your goals and also the available computing resources. So in this case, we've simplified the model greatly because this is a model we wanted to be able to use on a simple uh, desktop as part of a uh, simulation. If you're working with more processing power and you wish to maintain more details, uh, because maybe some of those details are important to the feedback you get uh, during your uh, test, uh, for example, if you're working on uh, ergonomic testing where visibility and the different elements in view are important, then maybe you're not going to simplify it quite as much. So the CAD optimizer gives you all the control you need to decide on the level of details you'll have in your final model and to go from a very detailed uh, model, uh, CAD model that will have elements that you don't need to exactly the end result that, uh, that is required. So we're now going to move on to the uh, Q&A. You can ask using the right-hand side GoToWebinar interface. Uh, and again, you can download the presentation uh, materials uh, as well in the handouts module. For those of you who will be leaving us, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We hope to see you next month where we continue this process and we look at how we can uh, create 
great looking uh, models using uh, textures in the graphic gallery. Uh, the next session will be held on June 2 at 9 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, time zone. So again, thank you for joining us today and we'll now be taking questions.